Hi everyone, it's Tara. Welcome back to Tara's Take. I'm fiddling with the camera as usual. So today I wanted to um, just kind of kick back. It's Saturday. I thought we could play a little bit with some old scrapbook paper that maybe we're not using for anything and use it for something. So, <laughs> so here I am. I have brought along some, um, this is rice paper I had printed on. And uh, I have a few pages of that, a couple pages, and then I have these. Oh, there's more rice paper. I knew I had more than that. <clears throat> and then I have these that I had done. These are um, on tracing paper, and these, I have been hoarding them. They are my, I did a video eons ago. It's been when we first started together, almost a year ago, but I did a Tim Holtz, make your own Tim Holtz paper. And that's what this is. So I was thinking that I would take some good old Walmart <laughs> scrapbook paper that I don't like um, and I would use it to create a different look on them. Um, there's a few. I used up pretty much anything in here that I actually liked and this is pretty much all the leftover stuff that I wasn't crazy about. Um, yeah, so, as you can see, a lot of polka dots, wallpaper look here, but I don't know, I was just thinking, you know, we could probably use this and put something on it that would actually make it look kind of fun. And I have napkins as well, so we might do something with a napkin or two, I don't know, you know, I always get... I always bite off more than I can chew as far as like how much, how much time I have to work with. Um, yeah, this one right here is like so bright. Oh my gosh, look at that. It is so bright. I did get a few good pieces out of these, but yeah. Not much. This one's not bad. I'm just glancing through here to see if there's even anything I want to use. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, I'm sorry. To me, this is so not pretty. I can't help it. I just, if anybody else out there likes it, I'm sorry. No offense. I, I mean, no offense. Okay. So I kind of like this one, and I'm thinking I might actually be able to make a piece like this work. And I'm wondering, um, let's see, like, I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna go this way. Maybe it'll fit better. Yeah, so let's go for it. I'm gonna go for it. All right, so I'm gonna get my Mod Podge going here on my brush. And I probably, you know what I should have done is grab one of those pieces of the acetate, the sort of acetate I had, or the, to rub this down. Um, but you know what, this is tracing paper. It's a little bit thicker than your regular, like, like the rice paper's much thinner. And also, I was just thinking that if anybody wants to join me, I did not say what you'd need. So you'll need some Mod Podge. You'll need a batch of papers that you want to reboot, I guess I might say. Just kind of remaster, you know, make them look better to your eyes. Um, you don't want to waste them, but you also don't want to use them as is. We're just kind of, I don't want to call this spicing up your old scrapbook paper, but jazzing it up a little bit, making it more your own. I think it's a safe, I put way too much on here, but that's okay. I think that's a safe way to say it. So yeah, and I'm gonna, see this paper is tracing paper, so yeah, it's hold, it's going down real nice. I don't really have to worry as much about it. It's not tearing or anything is my point. And this part over here, I've got a little bit on this corner, needs a little more. So then I'm just gonna go ahead and go for it. So basically, we are decoupaging a new 
look. And and tracing paper, if you don't know, it gets really, really wrinkly. Um, it's kind of like vellum, you know, wrinkles up <clears throat> pretty much right away. Which I really don't mind. I kind of like it. And then when it dries, you know, it's got that leathery feel and the wrinkles just kind of add to the age of it and make it look old and, you know, water damaged, kind of, <laughs> you know. You know, all that weird stuff that we love, us junk journalers love for stuff to look like. It kind of gets that look. And I believe I used archival ink on this originally when I did the stamping. Because I made this paper with stamping, so I'm pretty sure that I did that with archival ink because it's not moving. Uh, yeah. Okay. So there's that one. I'm gonna let that dry. And let me grab. Let me see. I'm just looking over here really quick at this pad to see. You know, I have these too. Let's see here. That maybe there's something in here that I don't necessarily. These are a little prettier. However, oopsie. Sorry, guys. They're not, they're definitely not perfect. Maybe a little too busy, I think. More polka dots. What's on the back of this one? Writing. Doing. I kind of like that. More polka dots on the back. Oh man, I just tore the corner. Oh well, it's okay. I won't be using the whole thing anyway. This is just a little idea I had today. I thought it'd be fun to try and Where'd my brush go? Did it drop in here? Yes. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh, it's all over it. All right, there we go. I have a wet towel here that I can wipe my hand and my brush with. What do you know? I was actually sort of prepared. I'll be honest, it was an accident. I didn't know the, the, the wet wipe was right there. It just happened to be there from the last video we did. <laughs> so. I'm not gonna lie and act like I knew because I didn't. So let's see, this is a lot. I think much more than I actually need. And I have a, um, if anybody's wondering, I use usually for this kind of messy project on my desk, I am using a uh, dollar store placemat, okay? That's still a lot of my punch. <laughs> Trying to wipe some of it up. I don't think I need quite this much. Okay, there we go. Okay, don't drop in there. Yeah. I used this paper because I thought it would look it would look kind of cute with what I have on this piece. So hopefully I'm not too far off. Those wrinkling. This again is tracing paper. 
I wonder if I... I've never tried this before with because I usually am using napkin and stuff like that. So I'm hitting this and pushing this Mod Podge out like I would with a um, piece of paper to get some of the thick some of the thick spots, you know, like where it is. I want to see if I can kind of moderate that bumpy look and see what I get. Oh, and you can see the flowers through it better, too. See, I, my tracing paper is a little bit thicker than your average, I think. Um, I ordered, I actually made an order on Amazon, believe it or not. I haven't done that in a minute. But I ordered some of the carbon paper so that I could do a better job at tracing frames and stuff and like on the envelope that I did with you guys on Tuesday. So yeah, I'm kind of excited to get that. That'll be here tomorrow. And we might we might be playing with it a little bit on something here pretty soon because I want to see. Now I'm going to do the top and see if it helped with that wrinkling because on that last one it's fine. But I kind of wanted these flowers to show through on this a little bit because the background I have stamped on this particular uh, piece I think they look pretty showing through. This isn't a piece of scrapbook paper I would use by itself, but with this particular uh, design, I think it might look nice. So, hopefully I'm right. Ooh, that glued down. There we go. And it did help to do that with the, um, the card. Now this one's almost dry. I've got wrinkles, but you can see the pink. The reason I used this paper when I saw it, I thought it might be kind of cute with the Paris background that I had stamped on with the Eiffel Tower and stuff that I had stamped on that particular. Just trying to get this glue, this Mod Podge up here. Glue. It's glue. <laughs> um, but anyway, yeah, that pink. I always, I don't know why I always think of pink when I think of like France. <laughs> I think of pink a lot. I don't know why. Pink and black and I guess probably because of some of the prints that you see in stores on material and stuff. Maybe that's why. Um, let's see. So now let's pick another piece of the ugly paper. Should I call it the ugly paper? It's, it's kind of ugly to me, you guys. Just being honest. <clears throat> I don't know if you know what I have some napkins let's see let's do a pretty napkin on I love this napkin let's see let's see that would be pretty mm -hmm. so let's go ahead and I'll use this piece and then I will oops, I keep bumping that phone I'm so sorry I'm not I don't want to repeat myself but for anybody who's not usually with me I am in a super small limited space and I apologize for bumping that like crazy so I'm picking a couple of things here that have uh, that have some green in them couple of pieces of napkin that I think would look pretty that kind of has the opportunity to match the background that is something I was thinking as I was doing this you want to pick something that's gonna go with what you're using oh sorry this brush dropped where's the tape uh-oh, where's my tape? Oh, there it is. <laughs> I'm like, no, where's my tape? Okay, I think the first layer will come off here. Yeah. Come on. So anyway, um, all I was saying was it'd be a good idea to pick a piece, a napkin or tissue paper, whatever you're going to use, that will 
because that background's going to show through. You want it to complement it, you know, you don't want it to clash. At least I don't want it to totally clash. Okay, so there's one, and then I'll use this one. Okay, and then I'll pick one more. Let me see. Hmm. Okay, I know that it's not Easter, but I just really think he's cute, so I'm going to use him. I'm not doing it for any point other than I think it'll look good on the background, and also, I think he's adorable. I may even just do one square. I don't want... Yeah. Okay. So it's Friday of last week for me, in case anybody's wondering when I filmed this. So Cordy will be home soon. He called and said he was not going to be as late today as he has been all week. He's had a really, really good week, praise the Lord, and a lot of overtime, which is good for us, especially right now, because he's making hourly, he's making so much less, you know, than he used to, so yeah. All the overtime we get helps a lot. Praise God. We just are very grateful to the Lord for that. Okay, I'm just going to lightly tap. Yeah, that background looks pretty. I'm going to get this down next, and then I'll go over these on the top in a sec. Oops. These napkins, um, I'm not sure. You gave me all these, right, Pamela? I think these all came from you. But they're, like, these two have a little thicker quality, so they, I'm able to touch them and not kill the napkin. That's why I'm able to touch it, because you can tell when you touch it. It's just a little higher quality on the, now this one seems a little bit thinner, but it's, oh, so beautiful, my goodness. I love this napkin so much. Especially on that playing card we did on Tuesday. Oh, if you were wondering if you'd seen this napkin before, yes, you saw it on Tuesday. I think you might have seen part of this one too. Yeah, the the, the nest. <laughs> I used the nest. Yeah, this one I can't push quite as much. That's okay. Now yeah, see, this green looks very pretty as a decoupage base, and that's what I'm talking about. Sometimes these papers, you know, you don't want to waste them, but, or just toss them out, you know, but sometimes you just need to find another use for them. So, um, also I was going to say this, if anybody's wanting to know about my brush I'm using, this is a blush brush. It is a Royal and Lang Nickel multi-purpose powder. It's a powder brush, makeup, that I'm using because I don't use my brushes anymore really and they are so perfect for crafting. Makeup brushes, I mean. I find that any brush is perfect. I use paint brushes to make, do my eyebrows because it's cheaper and I get more of them in a package. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, so I mix and mingle <laughs> my stuff, period. I think we all do, huh? Once you start crafting, you start seeing how things can overlap and be used for other things. and Yeah. It's kind of amazing, actually. Oh, I was going to tell you guys, perfect way to clean your stovetop if you are like me and it builds up around your burners at all. Um, I made my stove look like it was brand new yesterday. And I... I used I used a cleaner. I put it on there, left it on there for like 10 minutes and it was of course I still had to scrape it. And at first I was using like this small paring knife thing and then I was like, "You know what? I need something bigger, something flatter." So there's those three. We'll let those dry. And then <clears throat> I went um I thought, "You know what? I know what I can use." And I grabbed this, and it worked so good. 
my this one is uh, just from Hobby Lobby. It's but the palette, the paint palette knife. Oh my gosh, it was the perfect thing to scrape, 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 and then even this part, you know. So just a little heads up if you guys have a stove like mine that gets a little messy around the burners. Good way to fix that is with is with that um, with the palette knife. So I'm looking in here and I'm thinking I would like to use one of my pieces. Um, I don't want to keep whacking the phone with this, so I'm going to hold this over here so I'm not right there on top of you guys, okay? I'm going to give this paper a try. The one that has like the gold leaf on it. Um, for my piece, I don't even know. It might not even show through. I'm not sure because this is so dark. <clears throat> hmm. This is rice paper. Let's go for it. We're just we're just gonna go for it. If it doesn't work, well, we tried, right? This is experiment time. Because my picture, this is from my um, steampunk rose kit and it's just really dark so I'm not I'm just not positive we're gonna get any of the gold showing through or the butterflies or anything at least it'll be on a base of some kind and it's got a double side so <clears throat> I can still yeah I don't think it's going to Nope, it's not showing through. Well, note to self. Unless once I do the... Once I do the um, second layer, maybe it will. Let's try it. In for a penny, in for a pound. Amen. Here we go. This has so much gold in it anyway that... I was just looking for stuff in my drawer that I had that I knew I was kind of hoarding and I hadn't used to do this and I thought well these papers have been in there for a minute and uh, I might as well give it a try with these only because they were on the rice paper and the tracing paper and it's thin. Ooh, now what I do see is the movement of my ink from my printer. Ha. It turned the glue like a goldy green. Can you tell? I don't know if you guys can tell, but it did. So you can't see the stuff through it at all. And it definitely is moving the colors on the paper. So <laughs> note to self, not gonna do that one again. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> hmm. Now I'm worried to use. Yeah, I don't think I'll waste those others. I think I'll go ahead and use napkins or tissue paper. Um. No, I'm gonna do this napkin. Oh, this one's pretty. Look at this one, Vanessa, Valerie, my purple girls. Anybody else out there, purple lovers, that I need to be calling on? Whenever I use purple, I always think of the two of you because you've both expressed your love of purple <laughs> to me. <laughs> okay. All right, this one's pretty. Very pretty. And then, let's see. I think I will, I like this one too. Yeah, we used a part of this one the other day, and I really like it. So we're going to use a bigger part of it. I have no clue exactly what I'm going to use. Oh, here, this side too. I love both these sides. Um, anyway, I'm really not sure exactly what I'll use these for, but more than likely, they're going to be, uh, they're probably going to go as, what do you call it? Some type of cards or, you know, 
maybe even a page in a journal. That would look good. Now I'm thinking this would look cool. Do I want that one or do I want... I like both of these pages. This one looks... I like this one the best, I think. But I'm liking the color scheme to go behind these flowers. I think they'll look pretty. You can get most of them on there. Just making sure. Yeah. So I'll go ahead and do this one too. I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to fit. I mean, they're going to hang over the edge, but that's okay. All right. Tape. Tape ready. Start pulling. I think these are triple. Are these triple? Yeah, they are. There we go. There's one. Cordy and I have been, we're always looking for shows that, that are fun and funny, but still clean and decent, you know, stuff that we don't feel like we got to turn it because it's nudity or, you know, we just really don't get into all that. And, um, we've been watching <laughs> and it, and we're so bummed because it was actually a decent show and it only had one season and then they didn't even finish that one. And it's really sad, but it was the Gregory Hines so do you guys remember Gregory Hines, um, the singer, tap dancer, actor, you know, super talented man. Um, he was one of my favorites back in the day. And so we started watching it last, what, maybe a week before last. And it's such a cute, it was such a cute little sitcom. I didn't even remember that he had a sitcom, you know, it's been so long ago, but it was like 19... 90 something, 1990, 91. It was early 90s. Um, but yeah, he's a single dad, he's a widower, and, and he's, you know, it's just really cute with his boy, and his dad and his brother, and so yeah, we've been watching that on, on, um, oh, what channel is it we've been watching it on? Uh, what do you call it? Crackle, the app, Crackle app, so, yeah, but anyway, it's only, the sad part is, is they filmed, they, they had, um, they had contract the first season was supposed to be 22 episodes. They only did 18. <laughs> I was like, oh, poor Greg. I bet he was so bummed his show didn't take off. But it's really a cute show. I mean, you know, that's probably why it didn't take off, because it was too sweet, too innocent, you know, not edgy enough, you know what I mean? And it's like, ugh, you know, we got to always have the edge to ruin things. This is going to be so pretty. You can see the script coming through. I always love that. You guys know. So do you. I know you guys do too. <laughs> this one might not show through as much because of the dark flower, but that's okay. The dark flower is so beautiful, it doesn't matter. And I'm calling it the dark flower because I'm really not sure. Is it a chrysanthemum? Is it a, you know, I know somebody will tell me in the comments, please, what it is. It's funny, I don't know because it's one of my favorite flowers. I love it, but I just don't remember right now. That one. Okay. We'll do. And we'll do this corner up here. Actually, I think I can run this all the way across. And just get them both taken care of in one fell swoop. There's that one. Just go ahead and get this down. Here we go. Come on. There we go. 
And like I said, they're overlapping slightly and they're hanging off the edge just a little bit, but nothing that I'm gonna worry about because they're gonna get cut up anyway. But this is just a fun way to use up some of that paper that I probably won't use. I just didn't really care for what's on the other side of this one, so I will probably um, glue some coffee dye paper on the back of this and make these, you know, like a little note card, you know, journal card. Um, I'll probably do that with the with this particular piece because I still, you know, I don't care for what's on the back part. So, but I can always use script. <laughs> oh, and you can see it through this one too. That's nice. I like these. I've had some of you tell me, oh, I can decoupage. I could just sit and decoupage all day. And it's like, I know it's so much fun, right? I'm going to need some more Mod Podge here pretty soon. Does anybody know? Because I know how to make Mod Podge, you know, out of glue. I know how it's, it's super easy. But um, does anybody know how to make it look kind of satiny without, you know, I'm not really sure. I haven't looked it up. I'm sure that there is a video for it, but I have not checked. I love this rose. It's so pretty. Yeah, these makeup brushes, um, they really work well for this because they're soft, uh, and but they're really fluffy and they hold, you know, a lot of glue and yeah, they, I really like them. For this, I mean. There. Alrighty. There's that one, you guys. Let's see. Let's check on our, our original ones and see how they're doing. Got them down here. All of, I've got them all over the place. Oh, this one looks pretty. Oh, I actually really like that one. You guys are like, which one? Which one? We can't see. <laughs> so, I need to wipe this up. Sorry. Before I before I sit anything down here, guys. You gotta wash this off a little bit. Otherwise, I'm gonna glue my pages to it, and that would not be good. Okay. All right. Now let me just, I know, I'm taking forever, and you guys are like, we want to see the paper. Okay. So here's the first one. It's very, very dry and very crinkly. It's got a lot of lumps. I wish I had thought to take that card. I, I know I said I don't mind the lines, and I don't. I mean, in the long run, I don't, because it'll get decorated over and all that good stuff. But still, I think I like, uh, I'm just cutting into this because that edge is really kind of loose. I think I like the way the other one turned out because it has less of those. Now, when I do these as cards, I will glue them or tags, whatever I use it for. Now, this is actually big enough to possibly, this size, you know, you could use as a cover. I probably want this one. It is super, like, super crinkled. But what I was going to say is I will be gluing this to cardstock you know like to these pieces here and then that way it'll be stiffer and then I will decorate on top of it yeah it's super super wrinkly this one is wrinkly but not very wrinkly it's uh, actually turned out really good yeah this one turned out much better so if I use tracing paper again I'm gonna make sure and have my little glue pusher and just push that out so that I don't have to deal with all those all those wrinkles. It feels really cool. This is a thick cardstock right now that I'm cutting and so having this on top of that, it feels really leathery and it's got a cool feel to it. And I think this one actually has Yeah, this one's a double-sided, so see. Yeah, it's got, it's got polka dots. Oh, but I tore it right there. Um, 
Now, I am glad I did this piece because, like I was saying, you can totally see, you know, you've got your butterflies and you've got your plants that are stamped onto the paper, but then underneath, you've got all those flowers coming through. And, you know, I didn't care for this picture so much by itself, but now I like it. It looks much better to me. So there's that one, and let me see. Oh, here's the first napkin one. It's not completely dry dry, but it's almost there. Oh, what are you doing coming up? You get your little booty back down. You don't, that part right here is coming up. Hmm. It was not sealed underneath. Oh, you know what? Oh, that's why I did not pull that second layer. I sure thought I did, but I guess I didn't pull that second layer of the napkin up. Huh. What do you know? Or maybe it was just that spot. Because it looks like the rest of it looks okay. That's funny. Anyway. Anyhow, let's see. I'm going to go ahead and I'll let the bunny dry a little more. And I'm just going to cut through. <laughs> yeah, this one's not completely dry. I'm going to be cleaning my scissors off. I'll let this little guy sit over here and finish drying. This will make such a cute... I think I might actually do a couple of tags with this one. Tall tags. I like that. It's a beautiful napkin. Yeah, Pamela was telling, I don't know, I think she commented in the comments too that she has a, she has friends at, from church who save their napkins for her and then bags are saved by another friend that owns a market, correct Pamela? You can correct me if I'm wrong. But I was, I was thinking right now as I was cutting this, boy, I wish, I can't wait until I have more friends at church so they know I do this. They can save napkins for me. I'm just kidding. You never know. I haven't gotten to know anybody yet, but once I do. Okay. I just realized I have a cut right here on my finger. Oh, it hurts. I hit it on something right now, and it made it sting really bad. These are going to be super cute. And see the green paper in the background? It looks really nice. But it did not look nice by itself. So, yeah. Let's see. Should I do three or just do... I think I'll just do two big ones for this. Oh, that's going to be such a pretty journal card. Oh, love it. Now, this... I don't want to cut this, this in half, but I'm going to because I'm going to make two tags out of this. Two tall tags. And that's okay because once it's done, you'll just... You know, it'll just be natural to have half of that there. You know, it's no big deal. Let's see here. Anything else ready to be cut? This one's not dry yet. But it is, um, it doesn't look too bad, even though the, the ink moved. What do you guys think? I think she looks fine. She was always kind of, uh, you know, warm anyway, the picture of the girl. The whole thing is a warm setting, you know, it's just a warm group of colors, so. Actually, I think it looks pretty nice. Now this could, could be a pretty cover. I technically should have put her on the other side of the page and then that way when you folded it I guess you could revert invert it you know flip it on your computer but I'm just looking at it thinking this would make actually make a really pretty cover because it's such a whole picture you know 
do no and then of course we still got these little guys down here but they are totally not dry yet so what we're gonna do is since we have a few more minutes what time is it okay yeah I'm gonna go ahead and grab a piece of paper I have these here from making journal cards with you guys the other day uh, I'm gonna grab a piece I'll be right back I'm just grabbing a piece around the corner here And I am going to use, as I said before, and I always use it for my journal. It just, uh, when I'm, I mean, I just like the brown as my background for my cards. So, y'all know. I'm going to put that brush in the water and close my Mod Podge or I'm going to have dried out glue here. That's not good. Okay, come on. All right, now. I guess I can use my Aline's. I've been trying to use it a little bit lately because it gets so dried out when I go to use it, it's like dead, so. Come on, flow. Yeah, I couldn't believe it. I mean, believe it or not, I got five videos done today. Three devotional videos and two regular videos. And Cordy still has not called me to say he's on his way home, so that's good. Oh, these are going to be so cute. I love these. I love this particular napkin. I don't know. It's so... I like those kind of flowers, just the kind of lazy looking, <laughs> pretty, you know, poppy type little flowers. I think they're adorable, especially when they have that little watercolor look to them. Mm. Some of my faves. What's your favorite flower? Tell me in the comments. I don't know what my favorite flower is. This is probably one of them, actually, but... Um, I do love roses, but everybody, you know, roses is so common. Um, I used to love uh, the stargazer lilies. I love lilies. I don't know. I just like flowers. <laughs> I do. I just like them. I like them. Now, let's see. We can put one on here. Nope, this one won't fit. Oh, we can do one of them on here. I don't want to waste the paper, right? Maybe, maybe we'll be we'll be able to look at that last one and cut it. I don't know. <coughs> we got quite a few done though, so I hope you guys felt inspired to you know get out your old scrap of paper that you're not using and use it up. Use it for something else, you know, and you can even use it as jelly prints. Um, you know, and do some jelly prints on top of it. That's another really fun thing to do. We should do that. So we all love the jelly print, right? It's just a good way to use up your old scrap of paper and give it a completely different look. <laughs> very crooked today. I think we're going to have tacos for dinner. Um, yeah, we have that, that Mexican restaurant across the street from us, so I'm thinking we're going to share an order. Because they do these, this, oh, those are so cute. Isn't that pretty card? Um, they do, they do three tacos. You can get chicken or beef for seven ninety no six ninety nine three of them and they're handmade delicious the meat is like carne asada it's not hamburger um, or you can get chicken and then um, 
Usually we each get an order, but we decided the last time we did that, it's just too much food. So we decided we'd share an order of tacos, we share an order of rice, and then we get a, a bag of chips and salt and a cup of salsa, this big cup of salsa. So I'm thinking that's dinner tonight, guys, because that sounds good. And I've cooked every single night this week, so I'm like, okay, I'm tired. Yesterday, I even baked some cornbread. Mmm. <laughs> Honey cornbread. Very good. This is going to be such a cute tag. You know what? This one's got like the postage. This, this, these tags, these two tags will probably get used in our travel album journal. And now I'm gonna grab my my little card. Where is it? Where is it? I've got so many of those. I've been saving these the the cards to use as glue spreaders, and I have like a bunch of them now. Okay. Um. Here we go. So I'm going to use this to do my edges. Makes them right every time, guys. There we go. So there's that tag. Two journal cards. These will flatten out as they dry. I never sit them under stuff, hardly ever. I don't know why, I just don't. Let's see, do I actually need to get, how much of this would be trimmed off if I didn't? Eh, it's a little much. So I'll save that and use it for something else. And here we go. How are those doing? Let me see. Oh, they're still, they're still wet, but I'll show them to you guys. They're still wet. But I'm believing they're going to be pretty cute. Tag. I think I'll just do tags, actually. Um, I don't know. Maybe this one, actually, these two might, if I trimmed them right, I could probably use them as a nice pocket. I'm not sure. Okay. And then I'm going to probably decorate one of these. I'm thinking lace on one of these. Actually, I'm even thinking some sorry silk on one of these on these tags because of the brightness of the colors. But we'll see. Oh, my glue is just arguing with me. There we go. There we go. It's pretty, pretty, pretty. I realized if I just run along the edge of the napkin, I'm straight because the edge is that's the edge of the napkin, napkin. So it's a straight edge. <laughs> Since it's not the side I cut, you know. What I mean? Now this is the side I cut, so I'm gonna have to. work it even in that out. Okay. There we go. Those are pretty. You don't really need a ton with something that looks like that. Okay. I think I'm going to use the bigger side here for this. A little bit bigger side. Mm, mm, mm. I like these. I hope you do too. What are we going to decorate them with? These are going to be so cute. Let's see. You know me, got to do this. Got to do the corners here.
And also, another reason I do the corners is because it also, to me at least, kind of makes it look like my cutting is a little bit straighter <laughs> on my edges. Like it, it brings it, it lines it up a little more, you know what I mean? At least to my eyes it does. I don't know if it really does, but yeah. So I think I will decorate one of the tags. Let's see. Um, I'm going to grab this little guy and go ahead and make my holes here for my ribbon. I love that punch and it took me forever to get one. <laughs> I was so excited when I finally got mine. And then I'm going to go ahead and put my big glue over here and grab my little glue. Sorry for that loud noise. All right, guys, let's see. What do we want to do here? We've got a lot of really cool words. We've got... Oh, we've got our little, nah, I don't think any of these would look good on here. Let's see. I, I'm really having the struggle thinking about covering any of these, to be honest with you. Covering them that much because... Look how pretty they are. My goodness. So I'm, I am, I'm struggling a little bit with the thought of putting too much uh, stuff on them. And this, I think, might actually look really good on this one. Let's see. This was just a scrap of ribbon I had sitting in my, oh yeah, that looks pretty with that flower there. I thought you might. Let's trim you up a little bit. I'm just going to slap a little, oops, a little glue on the end here. Kind of stop this from shredding quite so much. This ribbon, this particular ribbon shreds really, really bad. Um, and then I'm going to put the tiniest little bit of glue, this little drop inside there, and kind of give it a push, and that way it stays put for me. That's how I do it. Okay. Um, let me see here. I honestly do not want to do a ton of covering with this. I really think I'm going to do um, I'm going to do some of the woody pencil around the edge. I've been getting back into using my pencil to and I've been trying to use it more for um, not just my art journal or mixed media or whatever, but I've been trying to remember to use it for stuff like this too. Because I really like it. I like how it makes things stand out. You know? You do have to be careful how much water you get on it because it will, it's like it's puddling right here. It'll dry, but it's best if you're careful about that. Or if I also sometimes just use like a paintbrush and I'll brush it on the edges. Um, I also forgot about it until right this moment. I have that pin that does pretty much the same thing. Uh, it's a 
Oh, you know what? It's coming up right here because of the water. The napkin. The napkin's lifting on me. Okay. Um, let me see here. Let me grab it. I'll show it to you guys. This pin. It's a Faber-Castell Pit Artist pin. Soft brush. And I got it on Amazon, and I do believe that it's in my stuff. But you just, you kind of get that same. And for a second, on the right surfaces, it'll move still. Like, you know how you can, if you do it really pretty quick. It's basically a marker. I mean, but I tried this with a regular marker, and it didn't do quite as good a job as this pen does. So, yeah. To be honest, I am not a professional artist, so I would have to look up the definition of what a pit pen is. One of you could probably tell me in the comments. I'm sure there's somebody out there hearing me who knows what it is. I'm just, I'll see, and I always do that. I end up writing on my stuff with it on the other side. <laughs> anyway, there we go. You guys get the, you get the drill. You get the point, right? And then, of course, let's do a little bit of gold. You know, we got to add a little bit of something something here just for fun okay always got to frame everything I like to frame stuff and this one is getting a person on it um, A child. Oh, precious baby girl. I think she is the one right there. I think I'll have her stand right here amongst the flowers. Amongst the flowers. And we're going to just put some groundwork here for her. Get it? Groundwork. <laughs> Let me see. I'm trying to grab my little brush. I'm just dipping this, if anybody isn't doesn't know what I'm doing with this, I'm dipping this brush into the water just a little bit to moisten it and it'll move the woody pencil. Okay, it's a Stabilo. Um, and it just kind of gives you a look like they're standing on the ground and I always kind of do it at an angle and just make it. I call it my little tornado. <laughs> That's how I think of it, like a little tornado. Now this girl, I am going to grab my uh, dauber and yellow her as I do, most of you know. Okay, I always tell you, just in case somebody's out there who doesn't know what I'm doing. And put a little glue on the back. Probably did too much. Okay. And she is going to stand right there. If you get glue on your finger and you touch where you used the dauber, it will wipe up your ink. If it's not dry, it'll grab it. Okay, and ugh, my hands are covered in glue. Miss Mod Podge, I wonder why. Okay, um, and this says Child of a King. Amen. And of course, We've got to have a little gold around this edge. I still have black on there from our last time we used it in that other video. How annoying. <laughs> still on. Oh, no, I got it on there again from this video. Duh. I forgot. Okay. Whatever. <laughs> oh. 
I just don't think this needs a ton of stuff, so that's why I'm just doing something so simple. Just looking. Now I want it down there where I had it. Should I put it on this side? Nope, this side. Okay. Sorry, little blue flower, you get covered up. Okay. There we, oops, there we go. All right, there's my tag. I told you I wasn't gonna get too busy with it. Oh, don't knock her up. And knock her off of there. Okay, so there is our tag. Child of a King. And she's out in the, in the garden on the backing of the gorgeous, now gorgeous scrapbook paper. <laughs> I hope you guys like this. Here this. Here's this one now. What time is it? Oh, it's time for us to go bye-bye. But as you can see, this is what I ended up with. Still a little bit wet in the thicker spots, but almost dry. Yep, I'm thinking that um, these can make really pretty tags. So. Just trim this off. And like I said, because I'm not super crazy about the backing on these, I will probably uh, glue these to a piece of uh, the cardstock as well. Well, plus it's super. It's not. It's thick. It's thick cardstock, but it's not as thick, you know, as it should be to be utilized for anything. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, there's that one. There's that one. Pretty pretty. You can see the words in the background. Actually, I think it, yeah, it goes this way. That's nice. And then this one. I love this one. Gorgeous, gorgeous, and this one. So I hope you guys felt inspired today to to jazz up your old scrapbook paper instead of throwing it out and have some fun with it. I love you guys. God bless you. Thank you for hitting like in the in the video if you enjoyed it, and if you did enjoy it for subscribing to the channel. And um, I hope that I will see you guys. Monday. Well, I'll see you tomorrow for the devotion if you come and join me for that. And then I'll see you Monday for Mass Monday. God bless you guys. I love you. Bye.